Hey, 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 it's coffee time with Flame Monroe. What up? What up? What up? I got my coffee. I hope you got your coffee. Here we go. Let me take a sip so that I can get the day started. Ladies and gentlemen, I just want to say thank you guys so much for subscribing to my YouTube channel and for the people who are watching and listening. Thank you for the wonderful messages. And I hope that I am touching and inspiring somebody each and every day. And I hope that somebody is hearing me and through all my rhetoric and my playing around and foolishness that I do have a message sometimes. Now, it's not always the greatest message, but sometimes. Okay, so ladies and gentlemen, let's start today with... Um, Tyler Perry. Tyler Perry has two new shows on BET. First of all, let me commend Tyler Perry for starting his own studio. 330 acres. Is it 330 acres or 303 acres in Atlanta and giving so many opportunities to so many different people. Older actors, younger actors, people of color to have employees. That's a lot of employees. A lot of people will have jobs now because of what Tyler Perry has done, which is fantastic. So he has acquired a, a part portion of BET as well. So now he has two new shows, Sisters and the Oval on BET. He really needs our support. Let me tell you how much. Yes, he has made enough money to get this business open and the studio open. But he needs our continued support because now he has to keep it open. And he has to pay these people and the lights and the air conditioning and the water bill and the gas bill. So please watch and support uh, you know, even if you don't like it, just put it on and just let it leave it on just so Tyler Perry can get the ratings because I appreciate that brother for doing something. He's giving back. Thank you, Tiffany Haddish. I believe he was very instrumental in te te teaching Tiffany Haddish how to give back. I don't know that to be true, but when you see, you, you when you're around people, they doing things, you do what they do. And Oprah has given back so much and Tyler is, his, is Oprah's best duty. So that is a beautiful thing. Plus, I like Tyler Perry, and I had a dream he's going to call me. I'm still waiting, player, so, you know, you, know, you need the number, 562, you know, okay, yes, yeah, the same number. Um, I want to talk about the Republicans storming the damn um, uh, inquiries at the House of Representatives because they, were, they uh, stormed the impeachment inquiries because they were trying to stop it. You can't stop the train. You didn't stop the train that, that that left. Let me tell you, Donald Trump has got away with way too much. He has gotten away with way too much up until this point. Some lady was on my box on my blog yesterday, and she said, "Oh, I love Donald Trump, and woo woo woo." Well, enjoy who you love. I can't tell you who to love and who not to love. Neither can I tell you who to vote for, who not to vote for. I can also not tell you that you're a goddamn fool, but you are. But I'm not going to tell you that. You have to know it. You'll find out. How about that? <laughs> I want to talk about the baby cupcake. They found the little baby in Alabama, the little three-year-old girl, affectionately known as Cupcake. I'm not even sure of what her uh, real name was, but I feel so bad for the family. She's so devastated that they were put, uh, that they have to survive and live through this. It is, it's, it's messed up, ladies and gentlemen. It is really messed up, and I can only feel for that parents because in order to know that level of love, you have to be a parent. So I know that the mother and father are absolutely devastated. And while we're on the subject of parents, ladies and gentlemen, I talk about everybody else. I cut up. I read. I say what I want to say. <laughs> but let me tell you about me. Let me be very, very honest with you all today. I have not spoken to my birth mother in more than a year. I don't say that with pride. I don't. I do not. But I grew up in a very emotionally, physically, and um, uh, abusive household, uh, 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 verbally. My mother was very verbally abusive to me. I was every bitch and motherfucker and faggot that you could think of. She beat me with anything that was close to her. She beat me sometimes because my mother was on drugs for so many years. So that does not give her a pass. But we still built past that relationship to have a relationship as I got older. My mother had my uncles, her brothers, jump on me when I was 14. And said that I threatened her. I never threatened my mother. I was one of those mama's boys that adored their mother. Even though she was horrible to me. But because I was gay. And very effeminate. Very sissified. She had my uncles beat me. And they beat me in front of the neighborhood. In front, I have witnesses. My friends who I've had for years can attest to that. I never even held that against my mother for years. I just didn't. You know, I probably, I'm sure I probably need some therapy. But I'm not going to do it. I called Ayana to fix my life. But that bitch hung up on me. Um... I just, 
I'm saying that I, well, I'm saying this to say that I'm, nobody is perfect. I'm not a perfect person. I am not a perfect person. And now that I have my own children, because of the way I was bra- raised and brought up, uh, thank God for my grandmother from being my mother being so abusive emotionally and physically. And you know she was on drugs. My mother had a sickness. She she was on drugs. She smoked the pipe for 25 years. She had a sickness. She does no longer smoke drugs, but. Her mentality is still the same. Her abusiveness is still the same. So where I thought that she would make up in my life would would be with my children. But that was not the case. Because my daughters, who I adore, whom I adore, I adore all my children. But my daughters are my pride and joy, my little girls, because they're my little girls. Was with my mother last July at my brother's house in Vegas. And my mother is one of those people who believe in spanking, just beating, not even a spanking. A spanking is one thing. My mother believes in beating. So my daughters don't get whoopings. Even though I told your daughter, I whooped her ass yesterday. I haven't whooped her in two years, but she's really clowning in school. So that's a whole nother page. But I spanked her with a belt on her behind and her legs, nothing else. I not black ass, broken noses and all of that. Um, she was trying, my mother was trying to whoop my 12 year old daughter and my sister. 15 year old daughter with my 11 year old daughter at the time so my 15 year old daughter intervened and she was trying to fight my 15 year old daughter so my 15 year old daughter stood up to my mother she didn't fight her but she was trying to keep her off her baby sister they actually got into a physical altercation um, my brother came in not knowing what was going on took a belt and started whooping my daughters because he didn't know. And this is my pride and joy brother. This is the brother I adore. The one that I raised pretty much his first two years of his life. Uh, called after the fact when it was all over. Because I didn't find out when it first happened. My mother went over the deep end. And tried to bite my daughter. And pulled her hair and everything. And she said the same thing that they did to her. But my daughter said I just did to her dad what she was doing to me. My mother called the police. On my daughters ladies and gentlemen. This is my God's honest truth. She called the police. On my daughters in this social climate, in this social climate where the police are shooting black kids and killing black kids for no reason at all. And had my daughters arrested. My 11 and 15 year old daughters were arrested by their maternal grandmother or their fraternal grandmother. Put in handcuffs and put in a police car. I didn't find out that day. I didn't find out the next day. My daughters weren't home yet. My brother didn't bring them home for two days. Because I didn't know I would have got in my car and drove my ass to Vegas. You know how I found out, ladies and gentlemen? My mother posted it on social media. And somebody screenshotted and sent it to me. This is my life. So behind the smiles and the laughter and the joy, I have a lot of going on in my personal life. And I still show up and I still do my job because it's important to me. What I'm saying, and I'm what I'm saying is not to say that I'm bashing my mother. I have a very broken relationship with my mother, which made me want to have a better relationship with my own children. I've seen an article this morning about um, relationships, of uh, emotional relationships, and how you um, how you deal with uh, emotional relationship. A toxic parent is just as bad as an absentee parent. So I wanted to make sure that I was not a toxic parent. I did not want to be a toxic parent. And I went through a lot of shit. I went through a broken heart. And I'm a cancer. We hold on to shit forever. I had a broken heart like you wouldn't believe for my baby mama. And I still stuck it out. I had to get a DNA test because we wasn't even sure if my last baby was my baby. Because this is the shit she was doing with me. Behind my back with my friends. Not outside my circle now. With people who call themselves my friends. My mother sends me two and three letters a week, ladies and gentlemen. I never open them. I put return to sender on them and send them back. I send back about 50 letters in a year. I don't want to know. I don't need to know. There is, no, there is no excuse for you calling the police on my children, my daughters, in this world of social climate. Because had the police shot my children because you were being overly dramatic, then what would I do? This is me giving you my truth. I cannot verbally and keep talking about everybody else and telling everybody else's story and not tell mine. This is my story, ladies and gentlemen. And I'm just and I'm not looking for no sympathy. I'm cool. I'm gonna be cool. My children are good. But I'm saying this to say that sometimes an absentee parent is better. Sometimes no parent in the house is especially when it's gonna do damage that will last a lifetime. I know that it sounds kind of screwy. People are like, Flame, you need to make up your mother. That's your mother. You need to forgive your mother. And this is not about forgiveness. This is about if I talk to her, even at this stage, and it's been more than a year, 
I may explode. So I, it's, I choose not to have anything to say physically. If she, she has sent text messages and needed money, I send the money. I'll send the money to my brother. He takes it to her. Tell her don't call me. I don't need no thank you, any of that. And that, that I got I got the receipts on my cash app. It, it could be whatever the amount is. I send it without even thinking about it. I don't want to have any relationship with my mother at this point in time in my life. I don't know what tomorrow brings. I hate. I would hate to, if one of us dies and we didn't get a chance to mend our fences. I do pray to God for that, that one day we can find a way to mend our fences. I don't think we'll ever be mother and son close. I don't even call her mother. I call her by her name. Um, but I just wanted you all to know that some, one, some days I have, and when I see stuff about children being, like the cupcake baby being murdered, that, that broke me. When I see things about kids being abused and sexually molested, because I had an uncle that sexually molested me, and my mother came home and beat me. They found out because he molested me and my friend Troy at the time. We were seven. I wasn't penetrated. Troy was. I was tight. Back then, I was telling you, but no, no, let me don't make a joke of that. I was, I, I, and Troy had blood in his underwear, and his parents told my mother, and she came and beat me, as opposed like, I did something wrong. When you told us whenever the family comes, open the door and let them in. I'm seven years old. I didn't know. So, I, I'm not looking for sympathy. I'm not even looking for, I just want you all to know that I'm a real person. They're up under all of the titties and all the laughter and the gowns and the, the clothes and my cutting up and reading. Real life happens to me too. And you know what? My skin is thin. I say my skin is thick and my skin is thick in the world. But when somebody means something to you, when they personally, when you have love for a person or love with a person, it can hurt you so deep and so bad and so quickly and for such a long time. So, ladies and gentlemen, this is my truth. This is my coffee time today. It is not the most glorious coffee time, but... I just felt like after I saw that article about parents growing up in a toxic or an absentee household, what they do to their children, I'm trying not to do that. I'm trying to be a great parent, ladies and gentlemen. I have been here in the trenches when days when we didn't have a dollar, and I do have a small team of soldiers that roll with me the whole time. So thank you guys, and thank you. And if you have children, love on your children. Protect your children. Don't talk crazy to them. I talk crazy to my children sometimes because they talk crazy back to me. But they are 16 and 17 and preteen. And I'm telling you, teenagers are something very, very different. So I'm going to go because um, I'm, I'm looking at these letters from my mother and I'm thinking about some things that has happened in the past. And I hate to drudge up old stuff, but this is coffee time. This is Slay Monroe. I need you to remember that can't no bitch do what I do. Put that in your head. Put that in your thought process. Put that on your mirror, ladies and gentlemen, and understand that if you only focused on you, you ain't got time to focus on nobody else. Peace.